Hey guys, it's Clarice again. How's it going? Hope everyone is well into the Christmas mood and having a good time. So, uh, not celebrating yet, but um, preparing for the big day or season rather. Um, today is my third um, Christmas tutorial that I am recording. And today's tutorial is going to be on um, holiday drinks. So um, it's also just like the, uh, not the previous one, the, the, the tutorial with the cute Christmas bear. I am going to start off with showing you how to draw the drinks and then with a little bit of Christmas embellishment and then we will move on to the painting. So to start off, um, we don't need brushes yet. So we're just going to be using regular pencil and I am going to be just doing the, the glasses very quickly and roughly so I know exactly where they stand. <clears throat> so I'm just going to do a base. And then, <clears throat> excuse me, then I'm going to start drawing the wine glass because wine is one of my favorite drinks. So, do a wine glass. It's kind of nice and robust looking. Not a fan of the tiny wine glasses where you have to keep refilling. I'd rather just have a nice round goblet that you can kind of nurse for the rest of the evening. I like my wine glasses to be curvy and full of shape, full body, just like the wine. Anyone else? A wine drinker? I'm sure there's tons. And so you do, um, so I started off with doing the crescent which is like more of an oval at this point. But um, wine glasses come in all different shapes and sizes, so I would suggest if you have a better shape that you prefer in mind, like absolutely go for it. Um, when you reach the bottom, this you just taper it off to the side, you do a curve, and then it goes straight down. Same thing on this side. The challenge over here is sometimes it can be uneven, um, and that really bugs me, because I'm not always able to get it just right. But I'm not going to fuss over that just because in this tutorial, <clears throat> I want you guys to have something fun that you can also create. Maybe use it towards your Christmas cards or maybe if you're creating something to send out to friends and family and you need some personalized artwork and you decided to do it yourself, like this would be a grand way of doing it. So... That's a decent wine glass, I think, right? And then I'm just gonna do the mouth. And again, it's just a crescent. It's not a straight line. It's about, yeah, it's like a crescent. And it's like a squished circle, pretty much. That's what you need. All right, so I'm happy with that. So I feel like this part's slightly crooked, so I'm just going to try and fix that best that I can. This is what I hate when you get into these little details and you're just kind of stuck with, oh, it's not perfect, and you just want to keep redoing it over and over again. That is what I hate. This also lets me know that this is slightly off. And that is not bad, I think. Maybe it's still slightly off, but... Uh, 
try and do it one more time, although I do like it to be a lot thinner. I like the stems when they're like a lot thinner. They just look a lot more elegant and nice. Like a uh, Louboutin pump heel. Those really thin heels that make you think, oh my gosh, if I stand on it, I'm just going to break that heel. I don't know. Um... I'm a full-figured woman, to put it politely, and uh, I always think, oh my gosh, is that even worth it? Like, how many times would I have to wear something like that? Or how many times would I be able to wear something like that um, before it breaks? It might break on first try. It just doesn't look sturdy enough to hold all of me, is what I'm saying. Um, yeah, but that's my opinion. Let me know if you guys own any, and it's super wonderful, despite your curvaceous, bodacious bodies. Okay, we're going to stop obsessing over this. Um, so now this is wine. Oops. And I'm just going to make sure that the wine's about here. I think that's enough wine, don't you? Mm-hmm. Then uh, I'm going to go on and do a margarita kind of glass. So this time I'm going to start with the top. So it's an oval. And then we go extend it from here and bring it in. And then bring it down. As well so you have this curve and then you have another similar curve at the bottom and then it it's the stem all right so take it all the way down and then you just do the same thing like you did with the wine glass you kind of do this it's Pretty much basically drawing glasses is like a whole bunch of curves and just making sure that it's symmetrical on both ends. I mean, that's the toughest bit, <clears throat> but I think this is fairly decent for uh, this tutorial. I think this is decent enough work. I hope you guys have found this useful uh, for your quick drawing. And this just gives us a ball, a ball, ball mark point of how and where we should paint. All right, okay. And then off to the side here, I'm just going to make sure that there is enough room to do some mistletoe holly kind of business. And leaves. And some fur so I'm just doing it very um, roughly so I know where things go and the idea is to to kind of do something similar to this it doesn't have to be quite round in shape like this is but you know any kind of Christmas foliage would be nice or holiday foliage rather so I have that and I am just going to elaborate on this when it comes time to paint oh for this um, for this glass I didn't tell you what the content will be we will be drinking um, I want to say gin and tonic because that's my second favorite drink or actually 
it's fighting with wine. But uh, I would also like to do, I was going to say a crushed ice drink, but you know what? Uh, let's keep it simple. Let's just make it like a gin and tonic and make it like a nice yellowy color so it kind of complements the wine purple. And our drink is going to be this much. A Bellini glass for a gin and tonic. I know, doesn't make sense. And uh, do I have enough lead? And we'll do a little bit of uh, Christmas stuff on here. Right. That's the Christmas touch to this drink. Okay. So I think now we are ready to get started on painting. And so to paint, we will um we'll use a couple of brushes. Let's use the Squirrel Mop 1, and yes, you guessed it, Silver Black Velvet 4, and I will also use um, this plain round in an 8, just because I haven't used this blue brush in a while, and I really like it. I just remembered it because I saw it. So to start off, let's start off with painting the, painting the drinks first. So for this, here's my approach to it. I am going to wet the number eight and just very faintly brush the water on the inside. But I wanna make sure I'm not touching the edges. I'm just kind of doing, wetting only the inside area, but leaving like a thin white line to the edge of the, the glass. And then I'm going to go in and use this brush, the one, and get, uh, first I'll get some purple. Where's my purple? I think this is purple. Nope, that's not purple, it's black. I thought I had my purple. Is this my purple? Nope, that's blue. Okay, okay, all right, so I need to just Quickly find my purple, give me one sec. All right, found my purple. So I wanna get my purple. Oops, I wet this a little bit. And get a good chunk of purple onto my brush. I had a lot of water on that brush, so it's kind of pulled up on there. And then I'm just going to add the purple in. Not quite the reaction I wanted. So now I'm gonna go in and get some of my red and add that in as well. Now this mixed with the purple Kind of gives you something interesting, right? And you want to mix it up. Just make sure your edges are still fairly open. And I will go in with more red here. So it doesn't look like one of those really nice fancy drinks that are not, that's not wine. You want to make sure that it does look like wine. Fine wine, a fine Christmas wine. So mixing the color all around. You can go in on top with more purple if you wanna make it darker. I just did.
Okay, I've tried to leave some white space. And I kind of like those different hues going on here. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this brush, which just doesn't have a lot of color, and I want to have like a nice splash happening. So I am going to do something like this. Ooh, I love that. So it kind of looks like it's just spilling out a little bit. You're just taking it from the ends and you're just kind of painting upward. And it just has a very natural run to it, right? Anyone else like this? And I'm just going to do some dots. Because you know how I love my dots, right? So it looks like a splash. There we go. So that's that. We're going to let this dry. Um, <clears throat> and now we'll do this color right here. I'm just going to make sure my brushes are void of any color. I seem to be missing my my paper towel. But for this for this one, we're going to do a yellowy browny kind of color. Let's just see how this goes. So, first things first, we need to wet this area. Make sure you have enough space between the drink and the edge, the edge of the uh, paper, sorry, the glass shape. All right, once you wet this area, we're going to use this and get a decent amount of this yellow and put it in. I really would like this stuff to kind of just blend in naturally. Like as soon as you hit the damp water, it kind of just does its thing. But for some reason, I guess maybe the better, if I had better paper, it probably would have worked better. I'm taking some brown. That's what I just did. And I'm just going to introduce that in here. I want to take some more because I want there to be like a clear definition of like, oh, this is a different color. And I'm just going to put that in there. All right, I like that. And so now for the fun part, we're taking this again, making sure it's damp and for this one, I wanted to go all the way from here, coming. Didn't quite work out well enough, but let's try it again. I want the yellow coming out from here. Make sure there's on just water. So from here. Yeah, this yellow didn't quite work out the way I thought it would. I guess there wasn't enough water there, but it should have kind of done something like that. Would have been nice. Here we go. Just make it come out from like the side. Now, for something like that, I'll just leave it and let's just see how it dries up. Ideally, I wouldn't want the purple to mix quite that way. You know what? Let's just... Push it away so it's not quite that doesn't dry up that way all right so that's that and now we can go on to doing the glass and now for the glass uh, literally all I'm doing is I'm taking um, a black or a gray let me just make sure this is the right color this is more of a blue a blue might also work um, we want very, very light amounts of it. And we're 
going to be outlining you know what let's just do black I just want to make sure that this is blackish yep so I'm just gonna take one of my black grays and for this one you might need to have your palette just so you can make sure that you're not getting a super dark version of your black um, and what we're going to do is we will move these colors first and foremost and then we're going to lightly outline and dipped in water and I'm just going to go in here and add a little actually for the for the smoothening of color I should use this brush just so that there's not too much happening with the gray we we literally because it's glass it's kind of a tricky thing to show and so for that I just want to show the edges to be very very precise and not throughout just here and there um, and then just like a hint of the glass. So when you look at it, like this takes the shape of the glass, so you know it's in a glass. Um, and you know it's in a wine glass because of the shape, right? So that's the idea. And so I don't want it to be too, too, too dark. And then again, we have the drawing of the shape. So like very lightly, you want to just tip across. just very lightly do that and then I'm taking this and just trying to smudge some of the the gray so it again so it you kind of see the glass a little bit I hope this is making sense and then I want the glass to be seen on this side as well so I'm just gonna go very lightly here And here right and that's that for the glass um, now it's on to doing the glass for the other drink and I'm doing the same thing Again, I want to take this brush and very lightly dampen it. And same thing here. And once you dampen it, if you then go in and do these details, it kind of gives it a nice blend. So that's an option as well. And just finishing the edges here. It's fairly dried up so I kind of went in very lightly there as well I'm doing some over here and then I'm just going in and doing some light blending And for this one, I'm just going to take a different spin and kind of fill the inside a little bit. And then taking this, just giving it a slight wash. Because I have this painted on there, I don't want to go on it, like 
like too much. So I'm going to try and make sure that any color that gets overlapping is very light. So when I paint this, it doesn't completely, oops, that's my palette, it doesn't get completely um, what's the word? It doesn't get too dark that you can actually see the color through. So now, um, assuming all of this is going to dry up pretty soon, we'll start. We'll start off with this bot, with the bottom right here. And what we're going to do is we're getting the red, and we will start with the red berries. So starting off with that. We have the outline, so the outline really helps, the, the rough drawing rather. So I drew this one. Now I want the other ones. Oops, 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 oops. Make sure it doesn't tip over. I'm introducing the number eight in the black velvet again. Because um, what I want to do is create another circle, but I don't want to use more paint. So I want it to be like a lighter version of that. And now, because it's too light, I'll just kind of dab in some of the red that I already have. And then same thing over here. I'm just going to do the same color. I did half with the saturated red, and then the other half I'm doing with just the plain. I don't want to cover up all the all the area of it, so I'm leaving some open. Um, I would do these, but they're still damp, so let's not touch it. Next, we do move this out of the way. Wash your brush. Let's get ready to dig into some green. So we'll start off with the. Where's my green? We'll start off with the green, the forest green that I like. It's very dark looking in the square, but you'll see what that looks like here. So I got a lot, a decent amount of it on here, and I'm just going to do this. So that's one side of the leaf, and then you hold down, press, and then slowly drag up to do the other side. And then same thing here one side wow I'm almost holding my breath for this <laughs> and then see oh wow I like that bleeding see how the red is bleeding in oh I love it so I'm gonna do a third leaf because I like to do things in threes third times a charm there we go all right so that's nice I like that rich green I like that so now I'm gonna go into my green brownie color and then I'm going to do the the little furs And these are super simple. Just make sure that your your brush is very fine tipped. So you can get that fine hair like texture. And you just very lightly press down on your paper. You don't do too much. I'm going to go back into the dark green and just give it a spine. And then add some using that green color as well. It's a little bit too dry, so I need a little more water on it. And you can add some brown as well to this. Find one direction that you can do this and just do it in that direction. Like don't go inwards or outwards, just, just do it in the one direction because trust me, the way it translates onto your paper will be different. And you can try it just to sort of see if that works or how that works. <clears throat> I'm going to do the same thing here. Needs a little more water. And 
there we go we've got a lot of green there now we can add some of the um, brown if you want not taking off all the green I'm just gonna dip in some brown and uh, try and get some on here it's not brown enough because now I can see more green but that's okay you get what I'm trying to do right I'm just gonna do some over here so it looks like it's overlapping on there just so it doesn't look completely out of whack I'll just do more of these leaves on there because they can be addictive Um, and just do some going back with some red and I'm just going to do some tiny tiny ones over here so it can look like the berries as opposed to the other stuff Alright, so we have that. So I think I think I'm happy with this. Unless you see me fidgeting with it later on, then you know I'm I lied and I'm not that happy. I'm fidgeting right now as we speak. Okay, yes, I am happy with this. Let's leave it and move on to here. And we're doing the same thing like we did in the previous one here. Give it that nice robust red. So it's like a red cherry almost. And then uh, I said we're using the blue one, right? Yes. And you make another one using just water. Clearly that was too much water. It didn't get enough of the red. But what's supposed to happen is when you touch this, the red is supposed to seep in and you get a lighter variation of this little berry. So using the same one I'm going to use make my third one. There we go. So there's three. And now I want to do the green leaves. I was just thinking about the reflection of these on here. Let's not go there. That would complicate things a little bit too much. So for the leaves, we're just going to outline what we have going on here in the drawing. Oh, look at that red coming in there. So pretty. And now we'll do the fun furs and you don't really have to make these ones super detailed if you don't want to um, you can sort of because everything is so pretty to look at already um, it, you can get away with not having too much detail on for these so like say I'm gonna leave that as is there which is a lie because I'm still going <laughs> Ugh. And then I will do another one here just to, actually no, just the leaf as I have depicted in the drawing. And then because this is supposed to show through glass, I will take the blue one, the blue and just extend So it looks like a, like it's, you're seeing it through the glass, if that makes any sense. 
and I'll try and get some of this red in here too. Because the red should reflect on glass. That's the idea. Same thing here. Just a tad bit here and there without making it too much. And yep, finally, we are done our painting of holiday drinks. This is it. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I certainly did. Um, if you have any questions or comments, uh, please feel free to comment below in the comment section or follow me on Instagram and Facebook. I am... Um, a very social person and I love hearing from you guys I love seeing what you come up with um, when you do your own based off the tutorial or otherwise thanks so much guys for watching and um, hope you're having a happy holiday season bye